because you'll hear people say things, oh, nothing has, someone told me this the other day, nothing has changed in my routine, but I'm gaining weight. The only thing that's changed is that I'm older. And you're like, okay, so did you track your nutrition? No. Do you track your steps? No. Do you track your workouts? No. Ah, so how do you know that nothing has changed? Well, hello, hello, everyone. So have you ever wondered about people who have resistant weight loss? Like maybe it's caused by some hormone imbalance. There's got to be something more to it than just this metabolism thing, just this calories in, calories out thing. Like maybe it's gut health or maybe it's sleep or something like that. Well, that's what we're going to dive into in today's Real Talk Friday. So what's up? I'm health expert Ted Rice. And what this show is about, if you're tuning in for the first time, is we break down science-based information on how to lose fat, prevent disease, and live a longer, healthier, amazing, incredible, legendary life. But on Real Talk Fridays, we sit down and we have a conversation, a real conversation. And today's conversation is inspired by someone who reached out to me on Instagram. And I want to say this. Well, you know what? I'm just going to read the question and then we're going to talk about this. So she reached out to me and said, didn't want to post this on your page. Curious if you'd entertain further discussion around additional factors involved in resistant weight management. As a certified integrative nutrition health coach with additional two certifications on hormone balance and gut health, I'd like to hear you peel the onion a bit more on weight loss resisting factors. And you know what? She was super nice, right? So here's what I want to tell you. I get into conversations about this. I have people try to engage me in conversation. I'm not that interested. See, here's the thing. A lot of people are insecure about what they know. And when they hear something that goes against what they know, it gets them triggered because they're not sure. Maybe maybe you know, I have to defend my beliefs, right? Oh, he's saying that it's just calories in, calories out, or you know, I've got to defend my beliefs. And she's doing it, and actually, she's super nice the way she's reaching out, right? But uh, I'm just using this as an example because it's a more recent example. But I want to say this. So I don't engage in conversations about this because I'm 100% clear on what matters and what doesn't. Now, how, how am I so clear and confident? Well, a few reasons. So she's saying she has a nutrition health, you know, health coach, integrative nutrition health coach. Cool. Yeah, I did mine 19 years ago or 20 years ago, I think at this point. I did the first ever holistic and uh, holistic uh, health and lifestyle coach. I forgot what he called it uh, by Paul Check. And we went into hormones. We went into sleep. We went into so many uh, gut health, digestion, so many things. It was actually... At the time I did it, it was awesome. Later on, I've come to realize that a lot of the things he was saying were, were incomplete, but at the time it was awesome. And so what a lot of people don't realize about me when I come out and say things and they're like, no, Ted, you're just, you're, you're talking about calories. You're just buying into old outdated ideas. Wrong. Try again, please. The real reason is this. I've been down these roads. I've been down these roads deep. Think about 20 years of going down these roads. I didn't do it three years ago or five years ago or 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Think about it. What have you been doing and learning consistently for the past 21 years? I bet you if you've got something, I'm sure you do, something that you've been doing, if you're an accountant, an attorney, if you've been a, an entrepreneur, if you've been, um, you know, no matter what it is that you do, executive director, engineer, I bet back when you first started, you know, in the first five or maybe even 10 years of what you did, you really thought you knew some stuff. But thinking about it now, you look back and go, oh, yeah, I was... 
I was really lost. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I knew some stuff, but I, I went down these roads. I thought some things were important. They turned out not to be important. And that's where I'm at. I've been down all these roads and I want to share something with you. So I believed in a lot of conspiracy, nutrition, what I would call conspir- uh, nutrition conspiracy theories, right? Like carbs make you fat. Um, you know, their hormones are working against you. Toxins in the environment are disrupting your body and causing you to hold on to fat. Uh, electromagnetic radiation causes issues. And here's what I learned. Now, here's the big shift. I knew I used to get into arguments all the time with people. Used to argue with people, and I was a, I was not so nice about it. I, I mean. I've actually apologized to some of the people I was working with as a personal trainer because, uh, you know, I was a, a bit of a douche about it. And the big change was this. I thought I really understood science. And in my late 20s, actually for a completely different reason, but I, 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 I went back into school. I went back into, now, now those of you who know my story, I, I dropped out of college the first time around. My brother was kidnapped and murdered. I think that's a pretty damn good excuse to drop out of college. Couldn't get myself to go back. And then I found myself in personal training and I loved it. It was a dream come true for me. And I would go to work in in, in the Eden Rock Resort and Spa in Miami Beach. It's right next to the Fountain Blue, which um, is probably the hot place now. Eden Rock's not so hot anymore. But you may have been there for a conference or two in Miami Beach if you you ever been there. And it was the place to work. But uh, I found myself eventually struggling financially, struggling psychologically, struggling business-wise. And I thought the, the key was going back to school to become a doctor or a, I was thinking maybe I'll become a medical doctor. I'll go to FIU. Uh, they just opened up a medical school there. Or maybe physical therapy because it's a DPT program. And so I looked into all these options and I threw myself back into school. And I got, for the first time in my life, I got straight A's. I was so motivated as a student. I took biology, got straight A's. I took chemistry, got straight A's. I got straight A's in the chemistry class. I got straight A's in the chemistry lab. And what I started realizing as I dive took a deep dive into biology cuz i really took this stuff seriously i took i took insane notes i really wanted to understand the foundation right and when we're talking about physics chemistry biology physiology that's the foundation on which nutrition sits upon that's the foundation on which medicine sits upon it's the foundation that everything exercise fits on. It's on the foundation of physics at the most basic level, then chemistry at the next most basic level. And then we get to uh, biology, right? Or human physiology is a subsection of biology, right? And so it all rests on this. And understanding human physiology, you have to understand physics to some degree and really understand chemistry. This is really all about chemistry. And so, you know, and that's the foundation on what uh, supplements work on, on, on pharmaceuticals work on, on these foundational sciences. And when I went through it, I started realizing, wow, I really thought I knew science, but it became super clear to me that I lacked a fundamental education about the principal components on which science is based upon. Now, what does that mean? It means that, you know, if you talk about gut health, you better have an understanding of of the anatomy and physiology of the digestive system before you build on anything else. And saying, well, a lot of people have, um, you know, low stomach acid, and that's the reason why they have heartburn, for example, right? So it's not high. It's something that's talked about in alternative health. Like, oh, it's not caused by high stomach acid. It's actually caused by low stomach acid. Well, you need to understand the fundamentals there. Okay, so what cells in your stomach produce hydrochloric acid? What's involved in that? 
so on and so forth. What can interfere with it? And, and so what I learned was I really lacked a fundamental understanding of these foundational sciences. And let me tell you, all the people who have these integrative, med, uh, uh, not medicine, but integrative certifications, a lot of them, if you talk about basic chemistry stuff, they don't understand. They didn't do stoichiometry. They didn't figure out how many electrons in the electron shell and all the other things that you need to figure out. And those are crucial for understanding, like the, uh, again, the, the, how, how it all works. And not only that, when I came out of uh, my education, because I ended up dropping out of school again, almost finished, and then my stepmother died of a heart attack. And to be honest, um, I'm not going to go into this story right now, but I'm, uh, oh gosh, how do I say this? I'm not happy she died of a heart attack. I was happy she was out of my life though. Uh, story for another time, but my dad started going downhill. And I dropped out of school to take care of him. I just couldn't focus on anything. You know, the same thing happened to me when, when my brother was kidnapped, right? And killed. I couldn't focus. I'm like, I got to be there for my family. And so I dropped out. And it ended up costing me. I mean, I'm still paying back student loans that I shouldn't have to pay back because I totally got screwed. I was just traumatized and made some mistakes. But anyway, even when I got out of that and got into back into personal training, and started looking at, oh, I need to help my clients in a bigger way than just exercise. I really need to help them change fundamentally. I need to help them lose fat. I need to help them change their behaviors and even change their identity. And I still, even with that basic foundation, I still ran into problems because I was still hung up on the low-carb dogma. I was a staunch low-carber even after going through all the foundational sciences, even taking nutrition classes, I was still a staunch low carber. In my defense, by the way, it's only up until recently that people have started diving into the low carb studies. What do I mean by that? We did studies on, we, not me, but scientists did studies on low carb diets and the, and the results were phenomenal. It was so clear that low carb diets were the way to go. And it was just like, well, why wouldn't you do a low-carb diet? And then some smart, astute mf -er realized, ah, hey, guys, your low-carb diet studies, they got way more protein in them than the low-fat diet studies. So here's what we need to do because we know that protein does some magical stuff. We need to compare low carb diets and low fat diets with the same protein amount. And when they did that, boom, no difference. So when someone brings up, oh, low carb diets work so much better. Eh, they, not if you keep the protein the same. And this was a critical factor. And why am I telling you this? Well, one, because <laughs> I want to let you know, protein's the king. When it comes to macronutrients, it's not carbs or fat. And two, because even a lot of smart people at the time when these low carb diets came out didn't have the thought to say, oh, you know what? But we're eating more, I mean, we're feeding these patients more protein. Maybe that will have an effect. No, we just took the results and ran with it. And I mean, smart people, people who are smarter than me, PhDs, MDs, right? And when I say smarter than me, I mean more raw brain power. And now it's turned out, it's so clear right now what the truth is. It's so, so clear because even better studies that have compared low-carb diets and low-fat diets, keeping the protein the same, they've done these studies. And they use doubly labeled water, which is, I don't need to go into it, but it's the, it's the most legit technique to figure out, you know, what's, work, what is, what's happening here right? And so they measure the physiology based on this doubly labeled water. And so what I want to tell you is this, it's so hard to figure out who has the answers and who doesn't, because you can have PhDs, MD, uh, medical doctors, people with PhDs. There, there are a lot of them that are saying the wrong stuff and not wrong because I say it's wrong, but because the best evidence says it's wrong. And I want to even take this to another level. 
I get consistent results with people. And, and I also believed in all this stuff. I, ha- I thought it was my hormones that were holding me back. In fact, I tested my hormones and my estrogen levels were high. I had clear evidence, I thought at the time, to support the idea that it was my estrogen levels that were messing me up and not the calories. This episode is sponsored by Organifi. Do you want to know a secret that all my coaching clients follow? It's really simple, but powerful. Add vegetables into each meal. But let's be honest, most of us, including myself, don't eat the recommended servings of vegetables and fruits each day. So for those of us who are on the go or have trouble eating healthy, having a greens powder makes it easy to get your greens in every single day, no matter how busy you are. And that's why I use and recommend Organifi Green Juice a superfood powder that you just add water to so that you can get your greens in even when you're on the go. The best thing about Organifi Green Juice is that it actually tastes great. But don't believe me, try it for yourself. And use the code TED20, that's capital T-E-D, the number 20, at www.organifi.com. That's Organifi.com to receive 20% off your first order. But hurry, this is a limited time discount for Legendary Life listeners. Now, back to the episode. Now, fast forward a few years to where I am now. I am supremely confident in what, uh, more specifically, of what of implementing strategies with myself and with my clients to create fat loss. There is literally no doubt in my mind. Now, how can I be that confident? Like, isn't that just dogmatic? And the answer is no. Actually, my approach is quite flexible. And if I learned something that was better, I would do it. But here's the thing. I get results with every single person who works with me. Okay, cool, Ted. But maybe you haven't had someone with hypothyroidism. Wrong. I help hypothyroidism people all the time. I had two clients recently. I mean, just recently, both lost around uh, 10 pounds with me in spite of their low thyroid. And a lot of the, th- and, and here's the other thing that I've learned. Here's a secret that I want to share with you right now. And this, I'm going to use hypothyroidism to illustrate this. So here's the thing with hypothyroidism, and and it's a great example because thyroid hormone is the only hormone that directly acts on your metabolism. So if your thyroid hormone is lower than it should be, you will burn less calories than someone who has the exact same muscle mass, exact same fat mass, exact same exercise and activity level, exact same diet exact same number of calories, exact same number of grams of protein, but they're going to be burning less calories. But here's the thing. It's not by much. What the real thing is in many of these situations is this. Are you ready? Because this is, this is for me was an epiphany. It's not the physiology. It's the psychology. In other words, You know what? why hypothyroidism really messes with people's fat loss results, weight loss results? Because they feel sluggish, so they don't move much. They move less. But if we get them tracking their steps, if we get them working out consistently, if we get them tracking their nutrition, tracking their workouts, we can guarantee results. And one thing, I'm going to actually talk more about this on Monday. We're going to talk about why being data-driven is the key to guaranteeing results. At least that's how I do it. So being data-driven is the key to getting results. And why is that? Because you'll hear people say things, oh, nothing has, someone told me this the other day, nothing has changed in my routine but I'm gaining weight. The only thing that's changed is that I'm older. And you're like, okay, so did you track your nutrition? No. Do you track your steps? No. Do you track your workouts? No. Ah, so how do you know that nothing has changed? Do you track your sleep? No. 
Okay. How do you know nothing has changed? Well, I just, I, I, I mean, I'm just doing the same things. <sighs> Wouldn't it be awesome if humans were these super logical, rational beings that were on top of their behavior all the time? But the truth is we're not. I'll give you an example. I'm not going to talk too much because on Monday, I'm going to really dive into this and tell you how I use data to drive results in my clients. But I'll tell you this. My cl- I had a client, Jeff. Shout out to you, Jeff. You are awesome and your results are awesome. And Jeff was telling me, he's like, hey, Ted, you know, eating this 190 grams of protein, it's really a lot of protein, man. Do I really need to be eating that much protein? I said, no, I mean, we could keep it that way. And there's benefits of keeping a higher protein intake. But if it's not working for you, we can adjust your protein. No problem. We can, how about this? Why don't we drop it to one gram per pound of body weight? And he was about 170. So dropping it to about 20 grams from 190 grams of protein to 170 grams of protein. Sounds reasonable, right? That's a, you know, le- a, a less protein, uh, easier to hit. And so um, he was tracking meticulously in my fitness pal. And then we looked at, I was like, but before we change anything, let's see what you're actually doing. So let's see, and let's see a breakdown of what your average uh, number of grams of protein are. And then we'll go from there. And lo and behold, and, and let me tell you about Jeff. Jeff's a brain. Jeff's a, a, a kick-ass high performer. This guy, not only is he smart, but he's educated. He, he spent a week in Wharton's business school. Do you know what that is? I'm sure you do. It's like the number one business school. It's like better than Harvard, right? Wharton's business school. Everyone who comes out of there is doing well financially because it, that's like some serious training. So this is a guy who's been through that type of training. How bright do you think he is? How meticulous do you think he is about things? How on top of the game in, in all areas of his life do you think he is? And the answer is pretty damn on top of things. But lo and behold, guess what we found? He thought he was hitting close to 190, if not hitting 190 consistently. What did we find? We found that he was eating 170. He was averaging already 170. And then I asked him, hey, Jeff, do you want to change this, man? You're already hitting 170. He's like, you you know what? Let's keep it at 190 because I'd rather shoot for 190 and and consistently fall short, but, but falling short and hitting the 170 than hitting one or then trying to hit 170 and probably falling short of that. Now, what a smart move this guy made, right? What a smart move Jeff made, because what did he do? He realized he was already making an error. He thought he was doing something, but when we looked at the cold, hard data, the data said something different and we acted on the data and he decided to act on the data in a way that took advantage of the psychology right? So we didn't say, no, well, yeah, well, let's just lower the protein because that's what you're hitting. No, he said, let's keep it at 190 because then I'll I'll fall short, but I'll hit what I want instead of shooting for 170 and falling short of that. So he's a guy who gets it. Do you see what I'm trying to say here? Do you understand? And we're all like that. Even the most analytical of us. I've got another client. Shout out to you, Eric, if you're listening. He was convinced his weight loss was caused by, uh, his lack of weight loss was caused by a, a, a B vitamin deficiency, pantothenic acid. That's an emotional rationalization for behavior, for not understanding our behavior. So even the most logical and rational and people who've done calculus one, calculus two, Differential equations one, differential equations two. Have you, do you realize how difficult th- those levels of mathematics are? I mean, I did calculus too. Part of it is the <laughs> instructors kind of suck, don't they? Once you get up to that level, it's just like they get it and, and they don't know how to teach it. <laughs> but uh, it takes, even, even if you had an excellent teacher, it's still going to be, it's like remembering all the details and going through it. You got to have 
a pretty amazing brand and you got to be committed to doing it too. But even a person like that, who's such a rational, logical, let's do differential equations type of brain still makes mistakes emotionally because that's the nature of human beings. And so I'm going to wrap things up now, but next episode, I'm going to reveal the data-driven strategies I use to get my clients results. And you are going to be able to learn some of that. And perhaps if you're motivated enough, apply it into your health regimen, your fat loss approach and get better results because data-driven is the way. And if you'd like to skip the free information because you realize it's taking up a lot of your time to try to figure this out on your own, and you keep going down rabbit holes, like maybe this is a B vitamin deficiency. No. Maybe it's a gut health problem. No. Maybe it's hormones. No. You don't know what you're doing. (laughs) And so if you want to skip that and just become a client, if you want to see if I can potentially help you, I don't know if I can help you. So you need to be coachable and you need to be committed and you need to show up and do the work. But if that sounds like you, then I'd love to talk with you about you becoming either a one-on-one client or joining my high-performance group where you will be held to a standard to track your stuff and to get results because everybody in that that group is getting results. So you're not going to feel good. If you don't do the work, you're going to show up and be like, ah, here's the slacker, right? So anyway, I digress on that. But if that feels good to you, if you like the pressure of stepping up in a group, if you're a type A person, if you, if you love data, if you realize data is the future of driving business, of driving uh, informed decisions, then you're going to love what I have. So let's talk and see if you're right to become a client. You can go to legendarylifeprogram.com slash apply. That's legendarylifeprogram.com slash apply to apply for my coaching group today. And again, this isn't for low performers. It's not for people who want to kick tires. It's not for people who want to commit to their excuses. This is for people who are pissed off and frustrated of trying to do this on their own. They're tired of wasting time, maybe months, maybe years, maybe even decades at this point. And they want to finally get this handled. You're in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. You're tired of messing around. You know that it hasn't happened for you yet. You know that the best predictor of future success is past success. And you're not happy with the success that you've had in the past. And you want to break through to the next level and think that I might be the guy to do it. Let's have a conversation and see if we're right for each other. Legendarylifeprogram.com slash apply. Love you. Hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for Monday's episode on using data to drive results for fat loss.